Hello everyone and welcome to your Sunday night edition of the TII podcast. My name is Craig Dennett and I'm your host this evening as we, I guess, take a bit of a different tact. We're in the middle of the international break. We're all um, fed up of it or well fed up of it by now already. We want Rangers to be back. We want to be talking about the title run in and we're actually going to look a bit further past that as well when we get to what's going to happen in the summer. We've got so many players where last year we thought was going to be the major overhaul at the club and yet now it looks like we're heading into a summer where it's going to be a major overhaul again and um, plenty of players to talk about in terms of who we think should stay who we think could potentially go there's some players that are sort of out of contract that are coming up and um, some are more obvious than others as to what way we think that will go rumors this week suggest that Borna Barisic for example is is signed on the dotted line with Trabs on Spur and Turkey so he looks like he's heading out the door but then what impact does that have for the likes of Red Van Yilmaz for example so we'll be we'll be delving into to each of the players and, and talking about about the current situations our thoughts on them should they stay should they go how much are they worth if we want to pay for them how much should we be selling them for all that fun stuff um around transfers just to to lighten the mood from this international break, but I'm joined by Ross and Reese tonight. Ross, how you how you coping this week? I love how you said late in the mood there. That's very much how every Rangers fans feel at the moment, isn't it, with the international break? Yeah, I'm I'm good. It's very much the same way you always feel during an international break. You you feel at the beginning of it that it's good to get a wee break, and then you're maybe 24 hours in, 40 hours in, and you're like, when when is when are Rangers back? So yeah, that's very much where I am at the moment. So. If I've got an opportunity to come on tonight and have a wee talk about Rangers transfers of the summer, I'm going to take it. Yeah, absolutely. Reese has um, got his Leon top on for some random reason. You can maybe enlighten his Reese as to, as to the relevance of that. But how, how are you coping with international football? Yeah, all good. Um, I'm not paying much attention to it, to be honest with you. I, when it's an international break, I just sort of switch off the football, as we sort of discussed beforehand. But the Leon thing is purely because it's red, white and blue, by the way. That's fair, as good a reason as any, I guess. So let's get us kicked off then with with some of the news um, that we've seen or some of the news or some of the players, actually. Let's start talking about some of the players that, that I guess are on that threshold of will they sign an, another new contract, will they not? The ones that are always on the lips of people are the likes of John Lundstrom, the likes of Ryan Jack. Kamar Roof came out in the last week or, or two and said that he hopes he can sign a new contract We'll discuss whether um, anyone thinks that's a viable option. Do let us know in the comments. Uh, send us in your thoughts if you agree with us, disagree with us. If you think these players should be involved in Ranger and Ranger squads going forward, that'd be really interesting. But Ross, I think first of all, what we need what we need to take into consideration when we're looking at each of these players is that Philippe Comont seems to have come in with a very different way of thinking and Niels Coppin as well obviously come in at New Year he seems to have a different approach as well to what we've seen in the past so do you think there might be some curveballs this summer that potentially players that we expect to be part of the squad are on their way out the door? I think honestly I think it depends on the success of this season I think um, if Rangers do have the season that we're looking for in terms of you know trophies then Maybe there are a few guys in the squad that their their value is going to be at an all time high, and Rangers might look to sell. I think guys like Jack Butlin, Todd Campwell, even a Red Van Yelmaz. The last couple of months, I would imagine all of these players' values will be going up as it stands. And you know, if you if you lift trophies, and you're in European football, for example, your value is going to be higher. So maybe the curveball comes into the kind of sales that Rangers can make this summer. I'm not sure they're going to have a lot of money to spend when we get there, based on the kind of commitment we have to Mohamed Diamandi and Oscar Cortez. Of course, that's not a mandatory fee. It's an optional, but maybe the club will look to do that. So I think curveballs, I would probably expect um, incoming, certainly. It looks like Niels Coppin has a, has a good background. It looks like he's willing to, to recruit players from further afield, which is something as a club we wanted for a long time. Um, curveballs, outgoings, I'm not so sure. I, obviously, we're going to dive into this list of players that are maybe out of contract or guys that are running down their contract we might look to sell this summer, but I, I think most of them will be relatively obvious who will maybe depart this summer. There might be some players in there that have been with the club for a long time and there's a strong relationship in terms of the the 
uh, the support with those players, but I think this is maybe time that you're going to see a bit of a rejuvenation in this squad. We've expected to see it over the last couple of years and we've not seen it. So I think Clement's going to come in. This is his first summer window. He's probably going to put a stamp on this Rangers team. He's going to bring in a lot of the players that he's maybe identified through the last six months. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about curveballs, but I certainly expect there'd be quite a bit of transfer activity when we get to the summer. Yeah, I think that this season has been such a strange one. We thought we were out of the league and any contention. We pretty much wrote off the full season by the time it got to end of September, start of October. It's been rejuvenated to a level that none of us, I think, could have anticipated. But at the same time, injuries week by week by week by week has cont have continued to get worse and worse and worse to the extent where you're like, don't have any more players that can get injured. Um, we're, we're relying so much on some players that are being are being thrown in to to matches to games to situations where start of the season they weren't even close to having a sniff. You're looking at the likes of Ross McCausland, for example. Dujon Sterling has been a stalwart in many games that we've had so far, and he was nowhere near even the squad. Never mind the starting lineup when um, when the season started. So it'll be um, it's. Like I think that shows the extent and something that sometimes as fans we just say right doesn't matter on to the next game when we need to win that one and we need to win that one and we need to win the next one and you, you kind of forget the context around it and, and the injuries and, and the media, I guess, as well. Rangers um, injuries tend to be forgotten more often than not. So that's that something that has to be taken into account as well. But I think the, the strength and depth of the squad is an area that I think needs to be addressed, Reese, as we, as we go forward. Yeah, 100%. I think, as we spoke about a few months ago when we had Abdallah Seema going out injured, panic stations when stuff like that happens because you're looking at guys like Scott Wright coming in out the cold to come in and perform and with all due respect we all know he's nowhere near the same level as Abdallah Seema. When Danilo went out injured we, we had the same problem with Dessers admittedly he started to get goals but there was a reason we supplemented that area in January so in the summer you hope it will be strength and depth as well but you've always got to be optimism going into the summer that you want a right good star player to come in right in the start of the Yeah, I think so. I think that's the case. Right, let's get started on the list. RFC 72 has gone in with two feet straight from the start. He said, for me, McLaughlin, Davies, Borna, Jack, Dill, Matondo, Hadji, Lammers, Dessers, Wright, Balgan, Roof could all go and wouldn't mind if Goldson went either because he looks like he's on the decline. Um, that's some list. Ross, I think I, I won't leave. I won't. This, this is basically the, might as well be the outline of our podcast here, and we'll touch on the loan players as well, and where we, if we think that we can, um, that we can afford, for example, to to keep some of them. I'd say Fabio Silva is probably slightly out of our price range. Abdul Asima maybe as well, but we'll come on to that one. Um, let's start from the back. Actually, no. Let's start from the ones that have been the most talked about. So I'll give you John Lundstrom, Ross. Are you? Are you giving him a new contract? He's 30 years old, probably his last big contract of his career. He's already one of the top earners at the club. Um, are you giving John Lundstrom a new contract based on, I guess, his performances since Philippe, since Philippe Clement has come in? He's been, he's, he's, he's been absolutely renewed in terms of his performances in that time period. Before then, I don't know what had happened, but he, he fell off a cliff for, this, for about nine months. And then he's been absolutely renewed. Does that give you any doubt about the potential of offering a new contract, or has he shown he's such an important, um, he's such an important part of the, the squad now and currently that we need to offer him a new contract? I don't have any doubt about giving John Lundstrom a new contract. I, I think this is probably the the player going out a contract that probably has the most debate at the moment in terms of. I think a lot of people are looking at it. You're right to point out there. He is one of the highest earners at the club. We're led to believe. Um, and he will be looking for a strong contract, as we all would in that position, wouldn't we? We want the best contract possible when you're coming towards the end of your career. But John Lundstrom's came out a couple of times and said he wants to be here. Um, I understand the debate around his form. It, it, you know, he's been great, you know, some months for Rangers and other months he's been really poor. I think under Bealey, he was, he was pretty poor. And towards the end, under Van Bronckhorst, he was poor as well, excluding the Europa League, of course. So... For me, I, I just don't see how this one is, is really a debate, to be honest with you. I think the way John Lundstrom was played under Philippe Clement, the manager spoke about you know, how, how much of an important player he is for him. He wants him to stay. The Both sides are saying they want to stay. I just, I think it's a no-brainer to keep John Lundstrom. I think the, 
he's he's one of the leaders in the, in that team now, including your Tavernier, Goldson, even Butland. I think you need players like that and in and in amongst the squad. If you are looking for a lot of turnover this summer with players, it's good to have guys like John Lundstrom in there that know what it's all about and has proved that he has the ability to play for Rangers, right? I know he has a poor form over the, the time he's been here, but I think the majority of the time he's been here, he has been good, to be honest with you. I think sometimes his performances were maybe blown out of the water in terms of how poor they were. So, yeah, no doubt for me that I would keep John Lundstrom. I, I think he deserves it. I've heard that debate as well. You know, is he only playing for a new contract? Well, I, I don't really think that's how it works when it comes to professional football. I think they'll give their all regardless. So, yeah, for me, it's an easy one, Craig. I, I would be keeping John Lundstrom in the building next season. Yeah, I think I have to agree with that, right, Reese? I'm going to try and group these together because there's so many players in the squad we can talk about that we could be here till midnight um, talking about them all and we, we, can, we can't really do that. So we'll take it. We'll start with the midfield, um, obviously, with John Winstrom and Ryan Jacks, another name in there as well, and then we'll move on to other areas of the park. But for me, John Winstrom gets a new contract. I wouldn't say any more than two year a two-year deal, um, and I'd be wary if we're increasing his money from where he is just now um, but I believe from what I read in, in the media anyway and to always take that with a pinch of salt that he's asking for more money than he's currently on um, which would push him towards the Goldson and Tavernier levels of of contract um, one does that change your mind on John Winstrom and a potential new contract and two what's your thoughts on uh, one for Ryan Jack John Winstrom I don't think there's any debate I agree with Ross that you give him a new deal but for John Lundstrom and in the media to be saying that he wants improved terms, he's put himself in quite a peculiar position to do that. That Hibs celebration is the most give me a new contract celebration I've ever seen in my life. And the fact that he's coming out in the press and saying, oh, I love the club, I want to stay here. Like Rangers are in quite a powerful position there. He's coming out saying he wants to stay. He's celebrating in front of the fans like he wants to stay. I, th I think that as well. Go? I think as well... John Wunsch just probably looked at his options in England and went, where am I going to end up? Maybe a mid-table championship team or something like that, maybe even more than that. Then you're thinking, he's probably thinking, I'd much rather be at Rangers. Um, probably looking at a few other players in that bracket as well. Tom Lawrence, potentially, is another one that kind of falls into that. Um, kind of like, if I leave Rangers, where do I go? And I don't think the level that they want to go to, whether that be lower end of Premier League or top end of Championship, are really where they would get the the offers from, but it seems we're all in agreement about Lundstrom. What about, what about Jack? I wouldn't give Ryan Jack a new deal, personally. I was looking at it up there, so in the six seasons that Ryan Jack's been at Rangers, there's been two seasons where he's not missed double figures of games. And in those seasons, it was nine and eight. So in just about every season he's been at Rangers, he missed ten or more games. And in two of them, it was over 30. So for me, yeah. he's just the best, ab uh, the best ability of football is uh, your availability. Yeah, I think that's one of the things about John Lundstrom as well, is he's always available. He's always there, he's, he's playing every game, he's always fit and he's always given 100%. And that's one of the things that, I guess, makes him stand out from the vast majority of our other players, is that he is always he is always showing up and he is always on the park. I'll bring on some of the, the comments here. Uh, Cubby Cubs are saying Lunny has played really well recently. If he keeps up the performances, get him signed up for a year or two. I think he'll. I don't think he would take a one-year contract from one. I think it would have to be two for that one. Uh, Hugo Bear says, during his time at Rangers, Lundstrom has been inconsistent. Um, Scott Kearney says, I honestly think he is overrated. Um, then uh, Rangers uh, Forever 55 says, gutted about Jack, I love him as a player. I think I agree with Reese on that one, Ross, around Ryan Jack. Uh, his availability just means it's it's an absolute... It's an absolute no-go for that one. And just before you start your answer, RFC72 says, I'd get rid of Jack, replace him with Baron. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on Ryan Jack? Uh, well, in terms of that last comment, yeah, I think Conor Baron would be a great replacement for Ryan Jack. Whether that's going to happen, I'm not sure. Um, but definitely looks apart. I, looked, I watched him a bit for the under-21s the other day as well, and he looked a great player. So, uh, yeah, definitely agree with that one. In terms of Ryan Jack... Um, I think it's maybe just been one season too long for Ryan Jacket Rangers. It looks like I, I agreed with the club giving him a year deal last year. I thought it made sense, um, especially coming into a summer where you did expect a lot of turnover of players. And like I said about John Lundstrom, it's good to have 
you know, guys around that have, have been there and done it. And I think I, I think it's fair to say that when Ryan Jack is fit, which is becoming obviously rare these days, he's comfortably one of our best midfielders. In fact, I would probably start him every single game. Like genuinely, I really would. Ryan Jack, I, his availability does go against him. And is he one of these players though that? The more the more he's out and not part of the team, he becomes a better player. Is that? No, nah, I don't think I don't think so. I think you can see it when Ryan Jack comes back. I have seen it a few times this season where, and I think it maybe this is why um, Raskan's struggling to get back in the team at the moment. But I, I seen games this season. I can't actually think of who we were playing at the time, so forgive me for that. But I've seen games where we maybe lost a little bit of control in the game. Um, and you would bring a Ryan Jack on and it just calms everyone down. He settles everyone down. He understands that maybe it just takes an, a couple of extra passes in midfield to to let Rangers sit on the ball and, and let them progress up the park. Um, and I'm working a slower paced way, get more control of the game. And that's what I've always really liked in Ryan Jack. He's not he's not he's not gonna do the spectacular. You know, he's not he's not gonna he's not gonna skin three players, he's not gonna whip a ball into the box, it's unstoppable. You know, he is he's a centre midfielder, a holding centre midfielder, really. Um, and he does it really well. And I've always understood that argument in terms of you can't play Lundstrom and a Jack, and I get it. But certainly in like those kind of European games or against Celtic, I, you know, I, I really like those two because they, they seem to understand where each needs to be, especially in the defensive phase. So, look, I really like Ryan Jack, but I have to say, I think this is a time that, yeah, he probably will be moved on this summer. He's, he's I think what is really worrying about Ryan Jack for the last couple of months is the manager's actually really been trying to manage his loads like he's been yeah. really vocal about that in the media of you know I'm not going to play him this week I'm going to give him a rest I'm going to make and he's still picked up injuries I mean what what did he come on for 20 minutes against Benfica 15 minutes over there and he's been out again since you know and we've seen it when he goes away with Scotland camps and he comes back and he's injured for two months and things like that it's just great player and um, it's really unfortunate the way it's going to end for him at Rangers because I, I really do think he's been a, a really good player for Rangers a great midfielder for us and, and I'd love it to be fit and keep him but I think it, you're at that point now where I think we all back the manager we all back Niels Coppin to come in and and have ready-made replacements to go so I think this is the summer where I would be willing to let him go maybe in the past you've not had a lot of trust in our recruitment but now I think the fans do and I think it would be time to you know shake hands around Jack I'm sure another Scottish club will pick him up you'll be getting a really good player if you can keep him available and um, but i think for us it's time to move on yeah look gibson 97 brings in another bit we'll maybe need to consider at some point but i suppose it's not for us to consider it's for the club to consider do we need to get scottish players in for the european quota thing if Jack Connor Bannon, will... scottish we're fine yeah. there you go <laughs> 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 signed on the dotty line already there you go ross said that you've heard it here first um <laughs> Uh, Reece, uh, one of the one of the other comments of Stephen Fay says all injury prone players have to go. I guess that brings me on to um, one of the the ones that we spoke about right at the start. Kamar Roof is I don't he's I can't even he's probably counting one hand the number of games he's been available for so far this season. He's still caught with some important goals. Um, he still scored that goal. He scored that goal away in Seville against uh, Real Betis. Um, scored it on our couple as well. I think he's such a good player and he's our best, I would go as far to say he's our best striker when he's fit. He's just, he just can't get fit for more than about 24 hours. See, I, I would disagree. My patience with Kamar Roof is wearing thin. I, um, there's a few times actually recently where I've said Kamar Roof is a myth. Like he comes on, he came on, I can't remember the last game it was, but we were losing. It might have been Benfica or something and he touched the ball four times in 20 minutes. To the point I'm looking at it going, what what does he actually do when he comes on? The Motherwell game as well. I'm sure he was chucked on then. Very ineffective. And as much as I would like to say, oh, he's useless. But he scored that winner at Dundee at the start of the season. He got the goal in Betis. So he has the, the goals to back it up. But he's just never fit. It's money coming off the, the club's books that could be going to something that's more effective for us. It's draining resources for the club for something that we're not getting a return on, really. And it's a space in the squad in minutes, really, with, that you want to give to somebody who might have a resale value, is going to score goals and is definitely going to play. Paul McGarrigo comes back a, a bit on one of your points there and said strikers need to get the ball first. So he's saying it's not really Kamaru's fault. He only touches the ball four times. It's it's partly the team for not getting him the ball as well, which potentially Very fair true. enough. Um Ross, it's interesting just on the on a lot of these points actually, but I guess more 
pertinent to Kumar Roof was a comment that Clement made. I think it was a couple of weeks after he came in. Potentially, me and you were sitting in one of the, one of his post match press conferences, and he spoke about how he'd never seen an, an injury record at any of his clubs that he'd been at before, like this one. Um, he'd said that he's used to having ninety percent of his squad as a minimum fit consistently throughout the season and Rangers were about 65, 66% of the squad being fit. Um, I think that's why we'll see quite a big clear out this summer of guys like Ryan Jack, guys like Kamar Roof. I don't I don't think I've seen one Rangers fan actually say that Kamar Roof should get a new contract. It seems like the writing is definitely on the wall for that one. Yeah, I found it funny the other day with those quotes where he was, I don't know whether he said he, he should get a contract there. that, I don't remember the quote exactly, but it was kind of debating whether he would, you know, sit down with the club and discuss a new contract. And I just thought, absolutely no chance you're getting a contract, Kimar, like it's not happening. Um, I agree a lot with what Reese said in terms of his important goals. I'm not as... Um, harsh on Kmar Roof. I actually really like Kmar Roof as a player in terms of, you know, that ability to grab a goal kind of nothing. Very intelligent, really good off the ball. And I think sometimes that's what you need. And and especially in domestic football where teams are are sitting deep and you and you need that little bit of creativity in your movement. I've really liked them through the years, but I just think the last couple of seasons you just you just, you just can't get them fit. I, I don't I really don't see the debate in this one, especially Regarding the the salary, he's most likely on. You know, he was signed for a decent fee. He came from Anderlecht before that. He was at Leeds in the Championship, absolutely flying. So you know, he, he will be on good money. And I just think it's it's time to let Kamar Roof go. He's he's it's one of those signs. I think you'll look back on. You won't have any. You know, you won't look upon him negatively or anything. He's been really good for Rangers when he's played. You know, he scored a yeah. lot of important goals. But I just think you're at that point that you have to let him go. Your your first point there, the second point you made about you know, come on and kind of him assessing the squad. I think you're bang on. I think come on will be, he will be really, really frustrated with the situation he's been in this season in terms of injuries. Um, And he'll probably take a look at the kind of recruitment department as well and say, why have we been bringing in players with an injury record like this? You know that, okay, you maybe bring in one player that's had a bit of an injury record. You've had the all clear from any specialist and you try and get them back to, to fitness, but we've had so many through the years that we've brought in and we've tried to get something out of and we've got nothing out of. And I I, I just don't think Clement will want that. He I think he would rather take a player that's maybe a wee bit less quality, but he's going to be available for him every single week. And I think that's where you need we need to get to with the squad, especially with the number of competitions we play in. Sometimes you, you are going to swap a player in that's maybe not as good as your first choice, but he's available and he can take the load off your first choice. So yeah, Kemar Roof comes under it for me in terms of being released. I, again, I look back at him fondly. Had a really, really good Rangers career, to be honest with you, in terms of how often he's played and the goals he's scored. But uh, yeah, it's just one one that I just can't see getting a contract and he will be let go this summer. Yeah, I think so. I have to agree with that one. Everyone in the comments says that as well. We'll come back to Yanis Hadji and Alex Lowry as a discussion when we got into the loan players. We'll be looking at the loan players that are currently at the club, but also those at the club who are are we out on loan as well? Let's move back to the, I guess, the goalkeeper and defensive areas. John McLaughlin, Reese is going to be out of, out of contract. I think it's a thank you and goodbye on that one. Um, Leon Balogun, potentially an interesting one in there. I thought he's well, he's been better this season than I thought he would. He's played more than I thought he would this season. And actually, he's probably, I'd probably start my head of John Suter in our defence, which isn't always the most popular opinion um, on here. But I would, I think, um, Conor Goldson and Leon Balogun is our most solid defensive partnership at the moment. Borna Barisic is the other one in there. Um, but as I said earlier, it's rumoured he's already signed a pre-contract agreement with Trabzonspor in Turkey, which suggests, obviously, that he's not signing a new contract at Rangers. But then again, what could that mean for mean for red van so if you can give us your thoughts on those kind of three players and if you forget any of them i will happily remind you because <laughs> no um i think john mclaughlin's one who for a while now i'd have quite have liked us to move him on purely so that we've got mccrory there as a backup and we can actually move kieran right out of the b team into the first team squad which i think he's probably a fair bit older than the rest of the b team squad which is probably normal for a goalkeeper that they mature later but I think he's he's ready to make the step up and with the age John McLaughlin's at, he's just sort of been in the way for a while now. So I think somebody like Hibbs, Hibbs have had Boric and Marshall underperforming for 
of a year and a bit, so it would be good to go there. And yeah, he's been called upon, and he's been all right when he's been called upon, but definitely time to go. Barisic finished for me, um, the one where he's went down in the corner and handballed it. Sort of epitomises Borna Barisic's career the last year and a bit. He's been excellent when he's on form, technically brilliant, but now that Yilmaz is coming into form especially, rumours of Hefty coming on in the summer, then for me it's a, it's a no-brainer that he's got to go. And Balogun, Balogun's pretty interesting because he was very much a Beal guy, but he's been absolutely excellent since Clermont's come in as well. And like yourself, Craig, I would probably play him ahead of Suter as well. But can you rely on him to keep that pace as he gets older? Wouldn't you wait and see? Well, he's already pretty old, I think. He's 36 or 37, is he not? So I think he's still he, really he, quick, though. He's recovery pace get, is really, really good. Yeah. Can maybe get another year out of him, um, Max, if we if we really try. Ross, one of the... Reese's went through them all pretty well there. I'm not sure John McLaughlin to Hibs will be one that John McLaughlin's too fussed about given his heart's allegiances beforehand. Um I think but I think he'll be out the door. Um I think we we'll, we know that Barisic will be the the hefty rumours are are ones that were obviously strong in January and it seems that we're just waiting till his current loan deal at Apoel um runs out in the summer for us to then um get him to come come to Glasgow so it looks like he'll be a replacement in there. Ridvan, I think will be an interesting one in the summer because it seemed like we were ready to let him go for the right price in January. He's come on to a real game um since the since the end of the January transfer window effectively. I think if we get if we were to get a bid of around six, six and a half million pounds for him, that might test us a little bit on that front. But I would I would like to see Ridvan Yilma stay um but I'm keen to focus on, I think, John McLaughlin and uh, Barisic are obviously out the door already, but the centre-back area, so um, Balogun, um, I think both Reese and I are thinking he should get another year. But also, one of the one of the ones that keeps coming up is people think we should sell Ben Davies. Um, keen to get your thoughts on that one. Uh, yeah, I'll start with Leon Balogun. I agree with both of you that I would probably give Leon Balogun another year. I don't think he'll be on a a huge salary for Rangers. I think he, he's came back research right under under Michael Beal to, to try and help out to to provide cover. And he's probably played more than I think his fans we would have expected them to this season, but he's never let us down. Um, I remember that night he came in against Dundee away and he was so good that night. I think Rangers won 5-0 that night and he was really, really good. And I think a lot of people were surprised by that. They managed to keep that level. So Balogun's one I would keep around, honestly. Uh, I think that's got to be caveated with that Rangers will have to go into the market this summer and bring in a centre back. It's there's no debate around that. You know, Rangers are gonna have to do that. You're you're looking at a John Suter who I think has been really good this season. I, I think he still does have kind of lapses in concentration sometimes, cutting to the ball. I think we've seen that even when he came on for Scotland the other night. Unfortunately, yeah, he wasn't night, yeah. wasn't great when he came on. So again, when you're coming off the bench and, and coming in at the back three, right? There, there is probably mitigating circumstances, but, you know, he, he does have that in his locker sometimes, a suitor. So, yeah, we'll definitely need to go into the market. So, yeah, but the, the Balgan one, I would caveat it with, okay, keep him, but you, you're going to have to bring someone in. Ben Davis is a, is an interesting one. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really someone that thinks that Ben Davis is a bad player. I think with yeah. quite a lot of the support, think that Ben Davis is a, poor footballer, not a good centre-back, but I've never really, every time I've watched him, I've never really felt that. I actually think he's quite a good player. Um, It just doesn't, it doesn't seem like he's fancied by Clement at all, because I know he wasn't fit when he first came in, but I think he's been fit for a while now, and he's not had a sniff. So, I think Ben Davis is one that the club will, will try and move on if they can. I think it's probably at the stage now for the player as well, that he will look to go. You know, he's, he's spent a year up here again. He's not really played a lot of football, so it's probably time for him to move back down south. And and he's got a good reputation in the championship. He was he was really good for Preston, so he, he would get a move down there. So I'd expect that to happen, um, especially when Rangers. I think I think we all feel that Rangers tried to move him on last summer. He was away for talks and things like that, if you remember, and Michael Beale was denying it and things. So... He is probably one I'd look to move on this summer, but I come, I come back to it. the the centre back position is a it's probably a bit of a worry now I think for Rangers because um, Connor Goldson 
you know, he's, he's 32 now, he's getting on. Um, you're going to have to bring someone in that you think can fulfill his role once he departs, whenever that is. I'm not someone that thinks that Conor Goldson's absolutely fallen off a cliff, which is some of the opinions that I've read in the last couple of weeks about the player. But I do think you're going to have to start, you know, planning for the future, planning for the long term. Um, so I think the centre-back area is something they're going to have to look at. But yeah, you're probably going to have to move out of Ben Davis first. Um, but yeah, overall, that would be the way I would look at it. Move on to Ben Davis and keep Leon Balogun. As someone who just turned 32 a few weeks ago and you describing Connor Goldson as... Oh, you're done. Over, um, <laughs> clearly, my football career and my dream of playing for Rangers is, is over. <laughs> and um, I'm really disappointed that you've delivered it to me in that way, Ross, um, live on air. So thanks very much for that one. But I think I agree. I think centre-back is um, definitely an area that we'll need to look to strengthen in the summer. Um, potentially, the reliance on Connor Goldson is, is a tricky one. I, I think what people throw at him is... He, he has a mistake in him. I don't think at Rangers we're ever going to have a centre half that doesn't have a mistake in him. Real, really, either they're going to be developing and on the way up in the game, or they're going to be a player at a level that's that that is really good. But when they get pushed into a latter stages of the Europa League, or they get pushed into a um, games against higher quality opposition, then they're going to have weaknesses that will probably get found out in in those games. And I think we see that with with Connor Goldson at times, but. In other games, he's an absolute stalwart for us, and he, he's um, and I'd say more often than not he is. Um, and I think he's really good with the ball at his feet as well. Um, from that, I think Aldo RFC in the comments um, bringing still bringing up that comment after the Hibs defeat at Hamden. I think that was what two years ago, two and a half years ago now. Um, I think it's uh, I think Connor Goldson has shown since then that he's he's committed to the club and he signed a long term deal as well recently so that'll be an interesting one. I saw a few rumours Reese about James Tavernier um potentially some Saudi interest in in him for the Saudi Pro League. Personally at the moment I can't it's maybe a he's it's maybe a year too early for James Tavernier to do that. I think he's still showing he's playing at a really high level. Do you would you agree with that? Yeah the Tavernier one's it's not really new. It's been going out for a while. I remember it was rumoured in ninety man like last year in the summer. Um is one of the sort of second tier signings they were trying to get. But for me, you just you lose so much with Tavernier. Like if we were to sell him. You we're so reliant on him. Majority of our tax go down the right wing for that reason. And he's just such a massive player. It's the same with Goldson that albeit we'll look at what Goldson brings in terms of mistakes, his ability on the ball, area ability. He's a leader. You, I could hear Connor Goldson screaming from my house probably. When he's telling the back line to get up, honestly, like he's so loud on the park that it's just those wee intangibles that you won't get in stats reports. You might not pick them up in scout reports, but you'll miss them when they're gone. And it'll be the same with Tavernier that he's not, he's never been a take the game by the scruff of the neck sort of captain that Terry Butcher he gets unfair criticism, probably. It's he's not a captain, but big games he steps up. And he leads by example, and he's been excellent for us. And so then, I think at, even given his age, and this reflects his importance, I would say fifteen minimum for Tavernier. And I mean, that's that exactly question from RFC seventy two. How much would it take for you to sell Tav for me fifteen to twenty million from the Saudis? Um, yeah. Ross, I can see you kind of mulling that one over. You're not going to get fifteen to twenty million. There's no, no chance that you get anywhere near that mm -hmm. amount. Um, I think that's pie in the sky figures, but how how much would it be for you to be like? We probably need to accept that for James Tavernier. It'd be about something about seven or eight million pounds, Mark. Do you think something like that was to come in, or do you reckon James Tavernier is so important to us that you reject that the, the amount of money we would possibly get for him isn't the value he is to us? So we just keep him anyway to the end of his contract. Well, I think that's the conundrum we'll always have at Rangers with James Tavernier. I think the how highly we rate him in terms of a fee, no other club will rate him that way. Do you get what I mean? I, th I think that's the problem we always have in terms of, that's probably why Rangers will never sell James Tavernier unless the player comes forward and says he wants to leave. Um, by the way, if a Saudi club comes calling and, and it's concrete and they offer James Tavernier 200 grand a week, I'm pretty sure he'll be away. I don't think there'll be a debate around it. <clears throat> I think... Um, I think Rangers will try and agree a fee for him if that is the case because of what he's given the club and that is life-changing money and I, and I couldn't hold that against him. So maybe Rangers wouldn't get the biggest fee that you would hope for a player of that quality. 
Um, but he is the other side of 30 now, I believe. Is he 31 to have in a year? So, yeah. yeah. So you're not you're not going to get ridiculous fees. And the, the, the Saudis don't really pay silly fees in terms of transfer fees. It's the contracts they give out that is the big thing. That That's why they were going for a lot of players at the end of their contract and things like that, because they were just telling the player, you give them, come here, get 300 grand a week. And there's obviously the tax things involved with it. So, yeah, I, I think Tavernier, I think you're both right. I think Tavernier will stay. I don't think that anything will tempt them away at this point. Um, but I do think the club, again, have to look at Tavernier very similar to Conor Golson, and they have to try to be planning for the future. Um, do John Sterling, whether we consider him a right back now or not, I'm not sure. I think the manager might consider him a midfielder moving forward. I'm not sure Adam Devine is ever going to be good enough, unfortunately, based on what we've seen of him so far. So they're going to have to look at that. But I think I'll just come back to it and say it again. Um, if a Saudi club want to have an ear and it's concrete, he will go. There's no question about it. I mean, you're not going to turn down that level of money at this stage of his career. And uh, I certainly wouldn't hold it against... James Tavernier, because one, I would do exactly the same thing, and two, he's given a lot to us, um, and I think he would deserve something like that to finish his career. So, look, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, but you know, you never know in football. Yeah, I think James Tavernier will be a Rangers player next season, but if he if he does want to go for that and we get a, a bit of money in return for him and for everything he's given us, then then he you can't begrudge him that move. I don't think you can begrudge anyone that move. To be fair, because he realizes we're talking about him. Being 31 and Conor Goals have been 32 and them being near the end of their near the end of their top level career, and you realise how much of life they've still got to go after that. So you can't begrudge them going going after the money, especially at that that age. Right. Let's move on from those to I guess some of the question marks that are hanging over um some of the loan players, both um loan players that are currently at Rangers and players that are out on loan from Rangers. Um do let us know. We're going to look first at the players that are at Rangers. So we're going to look at Fabio Silva, Abdul Asima, and uh, Oscar Cortez, um, who are all on loan at Rangers just now. The question that I want to ask, that I will ask Ross and Reese, but also keen to ask um, all the, the listeners out there or the watchers, do let us know if you could only keep one of them, who would you keep and why? Um, I think I'll, I'll kick it off and, I say, and I'll say that Oscar Cortez is the one that I would keep. Um, I think Fabio Silva is too expensive. I don't think he offers enough for what he is. I think he's a very good technical player. I think against the better teams, you see, you see that. I don't think you quite get that against the rest of the SPFL Premiership teams. I don't think he quite has man managed to to show up as much in terms of goal threat against those teams, and that's what we need from all the players. And those, I think, um, Abdul Asima. Again, Brighton maybe want now you bit too much money for him. I think they were talking of somewhere between seven and nine million pounds for him the last time that I um that I that I heard anything and that just seems a little bit steep for for him. But he was on absolute fire when he just before he got injured and um if he if he was to come back from injury, I saw on social media that potentially he's back from injury after this international break, which would be a huge boost. Um but if he was to come back from injury and continue that form then maybe there's a discussion, but I think Oscar Cortez and just the, the little glimpses we saw from him before he got injured, I was so impressed by him. He was so different to every other kind of winger that we that we had. Um and financially it's a it's a viable option for us straight off the bat. Reese, where do you stand on the three loan players, chances of keeping them, who you would want to keep, um, and who would be your one if you could only pick one out of the three, who would you keep? I think Silva's a write-off, just as you can allude to, the financials on it don't make sense. He's not a match winner, guaranteed. He's a, a very nice player to have in your team, but he's not a, a match winner as such. Um, I The one I would keep is Abdallah Seema out of him. But I, I have to caveat that with, we were talking about this the other night, actually, um, a few of my mates and I were saying, if Brighton asks for seven, are you paying it? Because I personally wouldn't. But I reckon if we can go five to six, then I would pay it. But seven, I, there's just something about it. That's the, the too far range for me. Um, Cortez, it's a bit of a double-edged sword with Cortez because he's injured and in that we've seen he's definitely good enough to play for Rangers. But you don't know that he's definitely coming back, that same player. But also, with the injury, while I would be shocked if we didn't have first option to buy him, 
it also puts off other clubs from buying them and enhances our chances of getting them on a permanent. So I, yeah. I would definitely like to keep Sima and Cortez in an ideal world. I, I'm less convinced that we will be able to keep Sima now, but Fabio Silva is a right off, but I would ideally like to keep the two winners. Yeah, I think Abdul Asima has another interesting point. So we're throwing two questions out to the listeners. Which one of the three one players would you keep? And then how much would you be willing to pay for Abdul Asima for it to be value? Reese is saying £7 million is too much, but if it's lowered to the 5 to £6 million, he would take him. Let us know your thoughts on, on that one. Ross, what about yourself? Um, I'm going to throw a curveball here. So I think there's, there's kind of two debates in this, isn't there? There's the... The financial side of it, and and or and then what player do you think is the best out of the three? Right, so there's kind of two sides of it. If you're asking me from a financial perspective, who would I keep? It would be Oscar Cortez all day because I think the the optional fee is around three and a half million. I think that's value for money from what we've seen so far. Reese is right in terms of Abdallah Sima that uh, yeah, I think I think Brighton will want around seven or eight million for him at least. And I'm not sure Rangers are going to pay that for him, especially when he's only been available half the season. Of course, that's unlucky and it's unfortunate. He was very good for us when he played. But again, your value does come down if you're not playing a lot of football. And I don't know if Rangers will see that as value. And yet you're never, we're never getting Silva permanently. It's not going to happen. I think I read the other day from one of the, the actually one of the Wolves podcasts tweeted about it saying that um, Wolves were actually looking to sell Silva this summer. And they were looking for around 15 million, right? So we're out. It's, it's not happening. Um, and he's on like 80 grand a week or something as well. So that's not going to happen. So from a financial point of view, it would be Oscar Cortez. Actually, see if you just gave me a clean slate, you could get any of them back. Didn't matter about the deal involved. Fabio Silva would be the one I would sign, honestly. Really? That um, surprised me. Why? Yeah, genuinely because I, I think he's the best player out of the three of them. Honestly, I really do. Um, we've seen his versatility now in the last couple of weeks in terms of playing off the left. I think he's looked really good up front. I think he looks to be a lot more intelligent than a lot of the players in our squad. That sounds really derogatory. I don't mean it that way. In terms of football intelligence, right? Just on the pitch, he looks, he just seems to be a level up. But when he first came in and he was playing with Campwell, I felt you could really see the two of them had played in the Premier League. There was just something that the understanding between the two players, even though they'd not really played together before, was there straight away. Um, and I've just seen enough from Silva over the last couple of weeks that we can, like, I, I would love to keep this guy permanently. I know it's not going to happen. I've, I've already accepted that, unfortunately. But I'd love to see him back for another season because I think he'll get even better. Um, I think with game time, he's going to get even better. He's not been playing loads of football over the last couple of years. I know he had a couple of loan spells, but I think you've seen him get better as the weeks go on. I think the manager loves him. I love everything about him in terms of off the ball as well. He, he, he works really, really hard, which is something I always like to see in a player, especially from a forward player. Um, I just think the technical ability has, it's really, really good. That that goal against Hibs, I know they're down to, to nine men, but the way he shifts the ball onto his right foot, you know, on that left-hand side and he smashes at home, I, I think he could do that week to week if, it, if he gets the opportunities. I know he's missed a few chances, but I just think overall, I just think overall he's the best player, honestly. Um, Cortez, I think it has the, the kind of potential to go to another level, Sima, I'm not sure sometimes in terms of he's, he's quite raw as a player. I'm not really sure you're going to change that. It's kind of the, what we had with Sakala as well, wasn't it? They're all really good players in their own right. Um, but Fabio Silva for me is the one I would keep if <laughs> finances didn't come into it. I understand that's not how the real world works, right? But I just wanted to throw that in there because I was curious to see what everyone else, else felt in terms of the actual, just the individual players themselves. Who do they think is the best and who they would keep? And, and by would be Fabio Silva. I think Fabio Silva technically is the best player. I don't think he's necessarily suited to the Scottish game. I think um, he's shown glimpses of, like you say, that Hibs, that goal against Hibs. He just one touch inside and he smashes, he smashes at home. He's also shown that he can be quite profligate in front of goals in terms of like that motherwell chance they had. They just had to any side of the keeper didn't even have to be a good a that's well all our forward just, players though Craig isn't it? that's all of them think of the deal of hearts earlier this you season can't be then, you can't just be going to be like oh that's fine then if, if all our forward players are like that we need better we need better we need someone that can finish 
I, I know, but th- that, that's uh, that's also a different debate in itself, isn't it? Because maybe Fabio Silva isn't going to be the guy that's going to score you goals every single week, but he's going to contribute to the team as a whole in terms of an attacking perspective. I'm not debating the, the fact that we still need a striker there that can actually score goals. I'm totally with you on that. I just mean from an overall, the, the player you've got there, I think he's someone that can make a difference, honestly. like I, I, I'm really looking forward to this old firm game. Because I think Fabio Silva could be the match winner here, genuinely. I just think he's got everything in his locker to, to score big goals for us, and I think it's going to come. Sure, yeah. I said that to Scott Patterson, actually. I think Fabio Silva will be good in all fun games as well, because you generally get more space in those games when Celtic are attacking. Yeah, I think it'll be, I think it'll be an interesting one. I've, if money wasn't an option, I think I'd go Abdul Asima. I think he is young at 22 he's obviously shown he's shown enough promise at great clubs like Slavia Prague and then Brighton has come to us he took a wee bit of a while to get going um, but ever since he scored that goal against PSV he's just been absolutely fine um, and he's uh, he was the the goal contributions that he was making towards in the games leading up to him being injured was was quite something and it made a real difference to us and he was starting to and he, he was one of those players that really found his feet really quickly under Philippe Clement and looked like he was really enjoying that his role in that team even when he was put put as a number nine he was still finding the back of the net um and I think he showed his real promise in in the setup that Philippe Clement has so I think if money was an option I would pick him Reese I know you said Simon Cortez if we can get Simon Cortez that would be great. We'll come on at the at the end after we look at sort of Hadji and Lowry. We'll come on to actually we've already spent money on Diomande that's going to come out of the, the summer budget. We're likely to already have spent money on Cortez that's going to come out of the, the budget. So how much money do we actually have left when we're also talking we need a striker, we need a centre half. You it, it starts to um the, the budget starts to get smaller and smaller the more you the more you talk over. But let's let's talk about Hadji and Lowry then we shall come to you first. Yanis Hadji initially was saying he wanted to come back to Rangers after that time after the time at Alaves. Now it seems in the last week or so he's been quoted. I've not actually read the quotes myself, so I've just seen headlines, but it seems to have been quoted suggesting that he would like to stay in Spain if he if he could. Where do you stand on on Yanis Hadji and then Alex Lowry obviously was at Hearts, came back with an injury, um, hasn't really been seen since. Um, I think Alex Lowry's chances at Rangers are gone, if I'm honest. I don't see him coming in as a as an important player. I think Hearts was his chance. He, he had a couple of um, high moments there, but I think their fans kind of suggested, yeah, he gave us a couple of good moments, but outside of that, he wasn't he wasn't great and his attitude was called into question a few times as well. Where do you stand on on those two players and if they should still be at Rangers next season? See, I've never really been overly convinced on Yanis Hadji. Purely, I think, because of his athleticism lets him down. Technically, he's a great player, but his athleticism probably lets him down. He's never going to beat a man. If he moves his feet quickly, he's not got the pace to get by him, he'll get caught. So for me, I've never really been entirely sold on Hadji as a Rangers player. And to see him say that he wants to stay in Spain, it's sort of a... It's a bit of a letdown because Spanish teams don't tend to spend much money. So if we're going to recoup a fee for him, I'd rather he went elsewhere. But I don't see a future for Hadji at Rangers by the summer. So wherever he ends up, best of luck to him. He's been great here, but I just don't see it working out. And with regards to Lowry, I think I don't. I wouldn't go as far as yourself to say his, his chance is gone. But I think the best option for Alex Lowry is a loan deal down south. So the only place he's going to generate value. If he goes and has a good loan deal in the Championship, he's worth a couple of million. But if he's a, a good loan deal up here, at most, out with the old firm, if you have a good spell up here, at most you'll be worth half a million, maybe. So it's down south for me to generate value and to see how he, he fares down there. What's your thoughts on on that, Ross, in terms of uh, Hadji and Lowry? Um Reese is saying bye bye to Hadji effectively, and then um, he's uh, saying that Lowry should go out on loan again. I think both probably can can leave in the summer. Where do you stand? Um, I actually go back and forth on Yanis Hadji. I think a lot of the positive thoughts I have about Ranger uh, Hadji coming back to Rangers is 
purely based on nostalgia, to be honest with you, because if I actually look at it logically, I just don't think he's a Philippe Clement player. I just don't, I can't really see it. You know, even think of the system we play in a 4-2-3-1. I think Hadji would want to be one of the two. I honestly do. I think he's always wanted to play deeper, but I don't. he's just not got the legs to play there for a, yeah. for a Clement side. And then if you did play him in the number 10, he's nowhere near Todd Campbell. Genuinely, he's just not. I mean, that, I think in a, in a way, it's a, it shows you that we actually are improving the standard of play at this club, which sometimes I think gets debated, but we, we genuinely are moving up, right? So I, I just don't see him getting anywhere close to Todd Campbell. So I just don't think he makes sense to to come back to Rangers. It, it makes me sad, to be honest. I think that knee injury really went against him. Um, I think at that point, he was really starting to draw a really good bit of form. He looked physically better as well at that point, I felt. Um, but it's just really unfortunate that's football that happens. You get a bad injury and I just think it's set him back a couple of years and I'm just not sure he's going to realise his potential here. I'm not sure he's going to realise it anywhere, to be honest with you. Just I don't think he's had a great time of it in Spain either. Um, it's, it was a bit of a weird move, I think, originally anyway. It just looked like one of those moves that Yanis Hadji just wanted to get out and play football, yeah. which fair play to him. Can't, can't have a go on him for that, but maybe it just wasn't didn't really make sense. So... I think Yanis will come back this summer. He'll maybe have a look at him. Come on, he'll maybe have a look at all players that come back. He's he's well entitled to do so, but I would imagine that Rangers will try and move him on this summer to maximise his value. I think he's two years left after this one. So that that's what I see happening for that. Maori, yeah, I'm not as harsh as you are, Craig, in terms of I don't think he has a chance at Rangers. I still think there's maybe something in there, but I totally agree with Reese. I think he needs a loan. Another loan, but it needs to be a loan that he's absolutely guaranteed to play every week. You can understand why he's went to Hearts. He, technical quality is probably good enough to play for Hearts, but does he have the mentality yet to play for a Hearts every single week? I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of off the ball work. has never been there. Um, and and funnily enough, you look at Ross McCausland who came in for us earlier this season. You've seen straight away as soon as he played, he, he wasn't great off the ball and he knew he had to work on it and he's got a lot better at that. So maybe he needs someone like that. He needs a good coach around him to to make sure he, he does have that hard work going the other way. I, I actually think a, a Scottish Championship loan would be good for Alex Lowry. Maybe his technical ability is above that level, but I really don't see it as a bad thing that he just goes and plays football for a year and he plays it at a, at a level where he just goes and enjoys his football. And he just tries I, to get a better rhythm. I just don't see how you go from even a full season at a, someone towards the top of the championship, for example, this season, like a Wraith. I don't see if, you, if you're if you playing for Wraith Rovers all this season, I don't see how you then go next season and come into the Rangers squad and be a, a serious feature in that. I think if you I, go to a, if you go to a Motherwell, for example, um, and, he, and you do well there, I think you can see that step. I don't see it if you go to a top if you go to a championship club in Scotland, you're you're done at Rangers. You're you're Does he you're, need to does he need to go out with uh the loan to to come back and play the next season though? I'm not sure he does. I, I mean that Alex Lowry's what only nineteen, is he? Is he maybe twenty? I'm not sure. He, he might be twenty at this point. Yeah. Um he's hard think, he's hardly think, kicked a ball. He's hardly kicked a ball from professional football. So he, I think he needs we're guilty though of we're guilty and a lot of other People are as well of saying, "Oh, that the, those players are young," but at the end of the day, you've got to you've got to have a point where they, they either need to step up or or move on. And letting players get to 22, 23 and having played a handful of first team games, that's not good enough. You need these I know, but that was only that was only his first loan. That was only his first loan. Yeah, but I, I, I yeah. just I I don't think he's I I personally don't think he'll have he'll get he'll get the time or he um or he's I don't personally think he's got the attitude at the moment to do it I'm delighted if he proves me wrong but I don't it doesn't look as though he's got the attitude Finn Fogel says well he's 21 in June um so I th I think by the time you get to 2021 if you've not if you've not made it that's it's harsh but it's it's, it's it's difficult to see a way into into the team if you've not already forced your way in by that point the only thing I would say in counter to that though is what is what age is Ross McCausland 20 is he 20? 20? Yeah, yeah, 20. I think he's yeah 20. and I think I think a lot of people would have said that Ross McCausland was done. Ross McCausland had one year left in his deal, and I think the reason he had one year left in his deal was Rangers weren't sure as a club whether he, he had it or not. And he gets the opportunity to come into the first team and he shows, and 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 now he's got a longer contract. It's, I think it's different. I'm not sure he has it, by the way. Well, that, that that's a fair opinion, but yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I agree with you there in terms of everyone's 
view on it is different, right? Yeah. Obviously, the club think he's got it right because they've given him a contract. So yeah. I just think for Alex Lowry, I just think at this stage, B team football's it's too low a level for him, right? We've seen that in that mm. year that they played in the, the Lowland League. They absolutely coasted that. I mean, he coasted it every single game. It just wasn't a high enough level for him. He's obviously then went to Hearts. Now that's because obviously Rangers rate him highly as a as a player, an individual player. And Hearts obviously the ability as well, but Clearly, it's just been too big a step. He's not he's not playing for Rangers really at all. He's getting the odd appearance and he's went to Hearts and, and Hearts are a good team, you know, third in the league for a reason. So I, I get your point in terms of does he go to the championship? Do you have a long-term future at Rangers? Maybe not, maybe not, but maybe you just go and get him football for a year. He becomes a better all-round player. You bring him back the next summer and you assess it and you go, do you know what? Actually, we've had a decent bid in for you. You've proved your worth this season in the championship. Now someone in the SPFL or the championship down south is going to take you, I think, Rangers just need to get him playing. He just needs to play consistently every week. I, I think we're kind of past that point for Lowry where it's like, oh, he, he should go here because it's better for his development or he should go there, it's better for his development. I think he just needs to play now. Honestly, yeah. I, I really do. I think the ability that he has as a, as a young footballer, he still is young as a footballer, I think he just has to play football now. And I, I think somewhere that he's still relatively close to home in the championship, I honestly think that would suit him for a season. Race you want to see, see it didn't if it didn't work out, Ross, and it does go to the Scottish Championship at the end of that season, as you say, if we assess it, if another Scottish club's come in for him or an English Championship club's come in from of a player who's had one successful season in the Scottish Championship, how much do you reckon we would get for him though? No, a lot, no, a lot. That's where I, w- I would send them down south 100%, just as that sort of safety net that they play, sh- they pay stupid fees down there if you have a good season. So I yeah, think I, even I, I can see, I can see the logic. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's risks for either, isn't it? That's that's the way you look yeah. at it. It, it. Maybe if Rangers see long term that Alex Lowry actually has a chance, maybe the championship would be a good move because you just get him playing. If they're in the 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 mindset that you're talking about there is that they don't really see him having a long term chance, but they just want to maximise his value, which clubs do for loan deals. Then maybe the yeah maybe the English Championship makes sense. Ultimately, I just think he needs to play. Regardless, yeah. I just I just want to see him play. I, I think he's good enough to play every single week for a team. Um, and I think it would help him in terms of, you spoke there, Craig, about the kind of attitude and things. I think that would help him if he's just playing every single week and there's a dependency on him to to be available for his team. I just think it would help him develop. Right, everyone, let us know your thoughts. And Alex Lowry seems to be the big debate there. Yanis Hadji, I think we all think, will be out the out the door come the summer. Maybe Fluke Quant will have a, a wee look at him. But let us know your thoughts on Alex Lowry. Um, I think his time at Rangers probably done going by the the probabilities in there. Um, Ross and Reese potentially give them more of a more of a chance there. But just to close us off on this podcast, we spoke a bit earlier about well, there's, to be fair, there's been a lot of players that we've spoken about in this podcast that we think are going to head out the door. The issue you've then got is well, how do you replace them? Not only with bodies so that the squad has enough people, but how do you replace them with bodies that are better than them or at least going to contribute more to the squad in the case of some of the injured players and, and things like that there are some of the consistently injured players that we've seen um we spent around 20 million pounds ish last summer and that seemed to be our full our full budget obviously if we, if we win the league and we go into the new champions league this might adjust a little bit but you'd have to you'd have to take a guess that we're probably going to be around the same the same mark, maybe even slightly less uh, than that. We've got Mohamed Diomande already committed to to coming in. That was around four to four and a half million, I think, roughly around that. If you look at Cortez, at three and a half million. We spoke earlier about Sima. If you're talking five for five or six million pound for Abdul Sima, that's mostly a budget gone. And yet we still need a striker that's going to hit the back of the net. We need a a centre half to come in that's going to um, that's going to compete for a starting spot. How does how does the commitments that we've already made, Reese will come to you first, how do the commitments we've already made to around Diomande and probably Cortez as well, how will that impact our summer spending, do you think? I think it will definitely take a chunk out of it. I think so. But um, when you think of, say, Cortez, if we manage to recoup the fee we paid for Sam Lammers, it's effectively a one-for-one swap. Didn't even think of Sam Lammers. He's so far out of the door. (laughs) (laughs) Sort of wipes that one out. And then you think of guys like maybe Scott Wright, Kamar Roof or something, and we start turning the massive wages that we're getting off the bill 
into putting money towards a transfer fee, possibly evens out. Well, it would be a bit of a stretch, to be honest, but I think we sort of supplemented the squad where we needed to the now, but we've done it in a way that it's going to benefit long term as well and that we won't have to replace a deal man day until he leaves, hopefully to go to a higher level. So I think we've done it quite cleverly, but we should still have a decent amount there, given season ticket sales and stuff like that. Hopefully another European campaign to look forward to that we can sort of offset costs against and selling guys like Sam Lammers, potentially guys like Dessels and stuff, and just seeing where we go for there. Ross, I think um, it does take a chunk out of our budget. Um, having what po- we've already committed, is that a concern of yours? Um, I guess probably need to be a bit smarter in, in the transfer market, but going by the moves that we made in January, despite a, real, a, I guess a budget of zero, as Fluke come on said on that on that night with um, Graham Souness at the Armadillo or whatever it was, um, he had a budget of zero for the January. If Given the moves we've made in that, in that certain those circumstances, are you confident that, despite a big chunk being taken out of it by what we've already committed, that we can that we can make it work for us? We've got Niels Coppin. I'm not worried about it. It's fine. <laughs> Look at the recruitment he's brought in the January. No, I'm just joking. Um, I think I think January gives me encouragement because maybe you, you have spent uh, you know quite a big fee in Mohamed Diamandi, but I think we can all see oh, over the last couple of months why we've done it. Right, clearly a player that is going to improve the, you know, the floor of our squad, bring it up in our level. So that one, I, I'm happy to kind of write that one off. I understand why the budget's been spent there. I think you maybe you just, you're maybe coming to the summer and we're going to have to do what we done last year. You know, we did. I think people forget sometimes we sold Antonio Cholak for two point five. We sold Glenn Kamara for five point five. We sold Sakala for four. So we did spend you know, quite a bit of money, but we actually brought in a decent set of fees as well. And I think that's maybe what it's just going to have to be again, Rangers, the, unfortunately where we are in the kind of transfer market, kind of food chain, whatever the way you want to describe it, we do have to be smart with our business. It's just the way we have to be. So no, I, I think the fees spent in January doesn't really concern me. I, I have faith, a lot of faith now in this recruitment team that they can identify players for a lower value that they can bring in and and improve us and I think a lot of fans have felt that way for a long time that we have to be doing more in kind of different markets so I've seen the evidence of that already only a couple of months into Niels Coppin so I, I back the recruitment team and him to bring in good signings this summer and, and over all those fees spent in January it doesn't concern me too much I'm, I'm happy with the business we've done and, and hopefully we see a lot more of that in the summer. Yeah fingers crossed well we've got a big um, a big run into the title um, campaign but before we get to that and a potential domestic treble on the horizon as well if all goes well um to look forward to before we even get to this but it's been really good taking i guess a bit a bigger picture look as we as we're in the the midst of this international break quagmire um we're about halfway i think we're about halfway through it now so not too long until we start looking forward to hibs at ibrooks next saturday so thank you very much to ross and reese for joining us thank you very much to you all for listening and watching please drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed the content please subscribe whether it's on youtube um apple spotify any of the any of the audio platforms as well please subscribe to the the channel it really does help us and it helps you as well because it means you won't miss any of our content going forward um we'll be back midweek i believe kyle will be back midweek uh, as we as we do finally get back towards Rangers and looking ahead to that game at Ibrox and at the weekend, um, which we all can't wait for. But thank you very much again for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.